So last time we talked, we talked about constructing a uh, summary table for categorical data, right? And I uh, did the activity with y'all for the uh, true color personality, constructed a summary table for that. We found percentages. We did all those things. We made and we made segmented bar charts or stack bar charts. We can make side by side bar charts. So we know how to do qualitative data. Did anybody have any trouble with the homework of qualitative data? Pie charts and bar charts or anything like that? Y'all okay with that? Any questions on that? All right. So I'm, I'm assuming since y'all aren't saying anything, y'all good on that. So tonight, the other part of the notes that I wanted to finish that I didn't get a chance to finish, we're going to be constructing um, the frequency tables for, uh, for quantitative data. And remember, quantitative data is any kind of numerical data, right? I got that. So it's numerical data. So we're going to talk about that. And um, I gave you all a, there still is that actual uh, Excel spreadsheet that's on Blackboard, the data set. If you need it, I can put it back into the chat. Do we need it? We're going to go through Excel again tonight. Y'all need it? If you have it, great. If you don't, let me know and I'll put it in the chat. I feel like not everybody's going to have it. And y'all won't say anything, so I'll just throw it in the chat anyway. Let's see something real quick. That was the one about gender and color. Uh, yeah, that was one of them. And the other one, they had a second one, the one that I wanted to talk about. Uh, winter days. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. But I think I might have messed that data up. So let me bring it up again real quick. I'm gonna add a new. I'm gonna add another thing to it too, as well. Another sheet, so because I want to do two examples with y'all. Give me a second. Let me get it. All right, so we'll be in Excel a lot tonight, by the way, because I'm trying to get you prepared for your first project in Excel. So if you're not by, if you're not working in Excel, you might want to get to Excel because that's what we're gonna do a lot of work in now. So let me send this to you. Is it okay if we use Google Sheets, or is it? That is a great question. I'm gonna tell you like this, like they told me. Um, let me read the email verbatim because I actually love Google Sheets. And so the other day I sent a message to my department chair or whatever. She replied back and said, here's what I said. I said, um, I know we're using Excel for project this semester. A student, it was really me but a student wanted to know if it was only Excel that could be used or if any spreadsheet or software was acceptable. Specifically, the student mentioned Google Sheets. I told him I would check, <laughs> asking for a friend. So she replied back, 
Uh, the business school wants their students proficient in Excel and STAT 2305 is supposed to add to what is taught in business courses. Tell the student, so basically she told me, they can explore Google Sheets, but Excel needs to be used. They got that. So like they told me, uh, you can use Excel, but I mean, you can use Google Sheets, but you need to not, you need to be proficient in Excel. Got that. But again, I know a lot of um, Excel and Excel and uh, Google Sheets share a lot of things in common. So if you can do it in one, you can probably do it in the other, to be honest. Here's the file, by the way. I'm sorry. I went through that to show y'all. Did that send? Yeah. So drop the file in. Bring it up. There should be there should be another tab called electricity cost. I'm gonna go through that one to use that one as another example. Right now we are going to be looking at this though. Screen share, share screen. I think I have so many screens open. I think so. All right, so this is what we're gonna be looking at, temperature calls. This is temperature. And um, for this example, these are the, these are, I think it's 20 Fahrenheit temperatures from a, a company that sells furnaces was looking at uh, different temperatures in the city for a particular month. And here are the 20 temperatures they got. I want a way to actually graph this data, all right? Now, we've talked about graphing this, we talked about graphing data so far for categorical variables. And when we don't grab the categorical variable, we grabbed a bar chart and we made, we summarized it or organized that data using a table, right? We used a um, table to do that, a summary table. We're gonna create uh, basically another summary table, but we're gonna make a histogram here, a histogram. And the real big difference between a histogram and a bar chart is that a histogram is used for continuous data. It's used for continuous data. And because the data is continuous, what that means is in a histogram, there are no gaps or overlaps. There's no gaps or overlaps, all right? So when we look at a histogram, the data should always the, uh, be, there should be no, if I go from zero to 10, then the next part goes from 10 to 20, 20 to 30. We're capturing something inside of each interval and we're not overlapping on each one. So I'll show you what I mean by that. And so here's how we start this process. The first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna determine how many uh, different, basically the bars that we're gonna use for the histogram. And in order to do that, I need to sort the data. So I need to sort this data first, all right? And so a couple ways to sort it. You can use your sort function that is, you can use your sort function that's up here if you want to. Sort and filter, or you can actually go straight into the data. So the uh, sorted temperatures, that's what I'm gonna call it. Sorted temp, you actually have a sort function in Excel, which will just sort numbers quickly. Highlight the numbers you wanna sort. And there, those are sorted for you. So we're sorting the data because we want to find the range of the data. You want to find the range of the data. And to find the range, the range, the range of this data is equal to the maximum value minus the minimum value. We see the max is 58 and the minimum is 12. So the range of this data is equal to the max minus the min is 46. All right, so because I'm building this for you, I'm gonna tell you what I want to see, how many bars I wanna see. For this particular data set, I wanna see five. In general, in truth though, when you make histograms, there is no real set way to do it. In a class, you can set the way because you know I want everybody to get proficient at making them. But in general, in the real world, statisticians, they don't have a real set way of making a histogram. And really what you're doing in Instagram, you're trying to show something. So if you want to, whatever you want to show, you're going to base your number of classes are the bars that you have based off of that. And so for this particular data, there are 20 values. So for 20 values, a rough rule of thumb, when you have anything, um, anything that's bigger than, or bigger than 50, less than 50, I mean, 
you want to use about five bars, rough rule of thumb. So in the range of 20 to 50, you want to use about five bars. So since we're in the range of 20 to 50, we'll use, we'll use five different classes. And that's what a bar is. A bar is a class. And so what we do now is this. If I know I want, we call them classes. If I know I want five of those, right? I need to figure out the width of the class. And by width, I mean, what is that interval that numbers are going to fall into? Because what's happening now is your bars are going to capture numbers. So like, for instance, instead of like in a, um, instead of like with the categorical data where you knew exactly where to go because you had a, a word and a bar represented that word, like blue, for instance, you had a blue bar or you had a blue group that people went into, the grouping mechanism is going to be an interval of numbers. So the number like 12 now will fall in between two numbers like 10 and 20. 13 will fall in between two numbers 10 and 20. 17 will fall in between two numbers 10 and 20. But then you get to 21 and it moves up to the next class and falls in an interval between 20 and 30. So that's what we're gonna do here. And the way we do that is we take, uh, the way we figure out how, that, how big that interval is, the way we figure out how big that interval is we do the range divided by the classes. We're gonna do the range divided by my classes. So we call this the width. And the width is equal to the range, which is 46, divided by my classes, which is this number right here, 9.2. And we always take this number and we make it a nice number. So nice numbers are numbers that end in five or 10. Typically we want them to end in tens though. So any number that ends with a zero is a nice number for. So 9.2, you round it up to the nearest number that ends in a 10 and a zero. So this is gonna be a width of 10. If you would have had, um, let's say you would have came up with like 18.2, you'd have went to 20. This says upgrade now to remove the game. Anyway, um, so for this. Do you always round up? Yes, always round up. Always round up? Yes, if you don't round up, what's gonna end up happening is you're going to miss out on some of the values, all right? Always okay. round up. Thank you. All right, that was a good question. Thanks for asking that. Give me a second, because it's telling me that I only got 10 minutes remaining and I have to buy something now. Hold on. Uh, Y'all can't see my like credit card information, right? I'm gonna go with no. Y'all can't see it. Uh, no. Good. <laughs> yeah. Did you tell no, me you could anyway? <laughs> Let me write it down. I, down money. I ain't got no money in my account. <laughs> <laughs> I can't see the expiration date on Okay, well, hold on. It's telling me I got to buy now. <laughs> Give me a second. Well, you can always pause the screen, can't you? I guess I could, huh? All <laughs> share. No, oh, wait, that's not what caught my more. Uh, so you know you put the gator email in there and they'll yeah. send it text and you're able to download it hopefully and uh you don't have to pay anything for it for while you're in school if you don't want to download it when you open your gator mail you can use it on your like chrome too okay that's yeah, so helpful thank you all right, I think we're back. I think we're good. Nothing like free, man. <laughs> oh, trust me. I just had to pay for this. Uh, 
So, again, back to what I was saying, recapping it. The range is 46. We want five classes. And, and on your homework, it tells you how many classes you want. And I think it actually sets the intervals for you, so which is nice. But if they don't, here my width is 10. When you do your Excel project, it won't tell you. You have to build your own histogram on this first one. And so, uh, again, you get your width. I took this 46 right here, divided by 5, got 9.2. Round it up to the nearest nice number. A nice number is the number ending in zero. All right. And so that'll be our classes. The classes are also what we call bins. You'll see people have them bins as well. So they're called bins, and that's also the frequency. And so I mean the bins, the bins are the width, and you have your frequency. So your bins are gonna be from you start with since 10 is the start, since your smallest value is 12, and you want to capture 12. Well, the nice, the nearest. The smallest, nearest, the smallest, nearest, nice number by 12 is 10. And we're incrementing by 10. So it'll be 10 to, your first class will be 10 to 20 like this. And mine makes the first one a date, of course. So let's go back and change that to general. So we can fix that. 10 to 20, it might make it a date. Change it to text. Excel wants to make things like that into uh, dates. So just be careful with that. Just change it to a text. So 10 to 20 is the first bin. Next bin, whatever you put as the end point on this one, it becomes the beginning point for the next. And I'll show you how this works. 20 to 30, 30 to 40, 40 to 50, to, uh, 40 to 50, and then you have 50 to 60. So look, you have your five classes here. One, two, three, four, five. And the smallest number is going to fit into a class, 12 will fit into this class right here, and 58 will fit into this class right here. So you're, you're fitting into your classes like you want to. So, and the question was asked, do we always round up? Yes, because if you would have round down to nine, what would end up happening is when you got up to this very last class, 58 wouldn't have fit. All right, so you always have to go up. That way you make sure you capture every value inside of a bin. And so again, when you look at this with these bins, they're spread out by tens, but really and truthfully, here's how this works. Because it's continuous, if I would get a number like 20, for instance, where would 20 go? Would 20 go in the first class or the second class? Y'all see the problem I get right there with that? If I get a number like, if in my data set is the number 20 right here, I need to decide what class does 20 fit in? Does it fit in the first class or the second class? Well, it fits into wherever, if you have 20, it fits into wherever your lower bound is, your lower 20 is. So if you get 20, it would go into the second class. This number up here, these back numbers, they're never included in the class. They always mean go up to this number and stop. The bottom number, the lower numbers, the left numbers on these, they always mean include in the class. So we're gonna include 10 all the way up to basically 19. Well, in this set, since they're discrete, since the numbers are whole numbers, you have to stop at 19. So it's basically 10 to 19 here. And then it goes 20 to 29 here, 30 to 39 here, 40 to 49 here, 50 to 59 here. So that's how this works, all right? And now all you have to do is go inside your data and you're gonna count how many values fall inside of 10 to 20. And so to help you out, we could just uh, color code these if you want to. So these first three will go into this uh, first bin. And the next one we have, uh, next one we have all the way to 27 in that bin. And notice here, you have a 30 in this set right here, but because 30 is the upper number, you don't include it. You bring it down to the next class. So here you have one, two, three, four, five, six. And the next one. You're gonna go up to 40, so that's uh, those numbers. That's one, two, one, two, three, four, five, and that one. The next one up to 50, so it's these numbers. One, two, three, four, and that one. Let's 
And then in the last one, it's one and two. I guess to give it a color. <clears throat> and you don't have to, um, like, I wouldn't put colors on it, to be honest, if I were doing it by myself. But I'm just showing you colors so you know what I'm doing, all right? So these are the actual frequencies for those things right there. And all we're going to do now is um, the same thing we did with a the qualitative data. We're going to come up with a, actually, we're going to add a new column, which is called the midpoint. We're going to call, because we're going to create two graphs. We're going to create an O job as well. We're going to put a midpoint column. And then we're going to put a percentage column. So the midpoint is the middle, the middle of each class. It's the midway point of each class. All right. And to find it, all you have to do is this. You take 10, you take this number right here on the bound and this number on the bound and you add them together and then divide by two and it'll give you the halfway point. So 10 plus 20 is 30 divided by two is just 15. Right. 20 plus 30 is 50 divided by two is 25. 30 plus 40 is 70 divided by two is 35. 40 plus 50 is 90. 90 divided by two is 45. And then 50 plus 60 is 110. 110 divided by two is 55. Once you really, and honestly, once you get the first one, you can just really add the, this width right here to each one of them because the midpoints are separated the same amount of parts from each other as well. So here go your different midpoints, 15, 25, 35, 45, and 55. Mm -hmm. And we're going to use that to make another graph in the few too. Y'all okay with that? Yes. All right. So the other thing I want to add is the percentage. Mm -hmm. I want to add the percentages. And remember, the percentage is just how many you have out of the total. So let's put a total column down here. Yes. I'm going to sum these up real quick. And I get 20. 20. So there are 20 total values. So all I'm going to do is I'm going to take each one of the frequencies and divide them by 20. Mm -hmm. So this first one has 15% of the data. I'm going to drag these down. It should capture them all for me. There you go. Yeah. Mm -hmm. We can make sure that this is right. Let's total, let's sum them to make sure they add up to one. Yeah. So there. That go our different uh, percentages. Yeah, got that? Yes. So we're going to make the bar chart from this now. Or we're going to make the histogram. And again, a histogram is just a bar chart with no gaps or overlaps. It's a bar chart with no gaps or overlaps. And it's used to show continuous data or numerical data. So I'm going to make two of them. I'm going to make the frequency and I'm going to make the um, percentage one too. So all I have to do is highlight my cells. Mm -hmm. So I'm using the bins as one, that's the classes or the bars, and I'm using the frequency to get the heights of the bars. And so for this, I'll just go to insert chart. I'll insert a chart and I'm gonna use this chart right here. I can use this one or I think I can use, I can use this one as well too. I think that'll work. That won't work, don't use that one. <laughs> I use the bar chart and just make it into a histogram. They recently just updated this thing with the uh, statistical packages, by the way. But I just use a bar chart like this. And I pick one of the bar charts. I need to highlight what I'm doing. Highlight this like that. Don't highlight that total, by the way. You probably can do recommended charts. Yeah, you can do recommended charts or you can just go pick your own chart. You get this. Problem with this right now, this is not a histogram. And it's not a histogram because you have gaps in between it. Everybody got that? Yes. So we can fix that. If you click on the actual bars themselves, right click, mm -hmm. and you want to uh, format your data. Format the data. And when you format the data, do you see how the thing it says gap width? Mm -hmm. Set the gap width to zero. And then you can play with other things as well. So like, I wanna see the lines in between the bars. So I'll click on this and I'll click on borders. And I want a solid line. I want it to be black. I want it to be thicker. 
I'm gonna take that off. There. This is your histogram. All right. And the histogram, this is what we call the frequency histogram. Because if you look at your Y axis over here, the frequency, you're measuring the frequency of it. And a frequency histogram is okay to use if you're only talking about one distribution. In general though, we wanna look at the percentages because that's why we compare things. Because we can compare if the percentages are the same. So I'm gonna make a percentage one too. So all I'm gonna do is, I wanna grab this column. Um, on my computer, I'm using a Mac, so I'm gonna press Command. I think on most of y'all, it'll probably be Control to grab another column. <laughs> like this at the same time. So I wanna grab both those columns and make it out of that one now. So again, I'll insert here and go here. And see, same thing came up. So I'll go to, uh, I wanna format these again. You click on this one right here. It'll let you change your gap width, set your gap width to zero. I like to see my lines, that's why I changed these. Do it like that, and there's your graph. What do we notice about both graphs? Same. There's They're exactly identical. Graph. What's different about them? Oh, you can't hear me. I can hear you now. What's different about them? Oh, it was different. They're the same as what? The same, they have the same shape, right? Yeah. Exact same shape, right? What's different about them? The, the um. Axis is the, the, the axis. The percentage yeah. sign is Good. Good. So we see that the difference here is that you have one has percentages and one has frequency, the right? Number. Yeah. Frequencies, yes. Good. One has frequency, one has percentages. When we want to compare distributions, we always make the percentage one, all right? Okay. Now, there's another way to do this, probably a quicker way to do this, than going through and color coding and counting like that. Yes. And it's through using pivot tables. Oh. And so, if, have you ever used pivot tables before? No. <laughs> I have. If you have, no. you've got to use pivot tables and you're good. If you haven't, yeah. Uh, it takes a little bit of getting used to, but it's not that bad. I learned how to do it five minutes ago. So if I mess up, <laughs> you, you pivot table experts, please call me out on it. <laughs> so anyway, you take your data just like this. We don't even sort the data in a pivot table. In a pivot table mm -hmm. And go to insert. You have to pick one of your cells first like this. Or actually, you have to highlight what you're talking about. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to highlight this cell right here. Highlight my data right here. And right here it says pivot tables. Click on pivot table. And then just press OK. OK. <laughs> right. Press OK. And up here you have a variable sitting up here, which is temperature. And you want temperature to define your rows for you, like this. And then you also want to drag temperature to where it says values and put it here. And you should get the exact same values for row labels and the exact same value for sum of temperature. So the row labels are counting, the row labels are the rows going across and then the sum of the temperature, the row labels are also gonna act as the sum of the temperature. But we don't wanna do, we don't want the sum, we actually want the counts. We want the counts of each one of these to occur. And what that means is whatever your rows were, let's say you had two 12s in this data set, it's gonna show you over here that you're gonna have two 12s, it's gonna count the frequency like that. So I need to change this variable right here, click on it. Let me give you double click. Oh. See, I told you I'm not an expert at it. Oh, there you go. Right click and go to field settings. Mine was field setting, source temperature. You want to summarize by the count. You want to summarize by the count. So you want to change sum to count. So if you right click on this and go to field setting, you should be able to click on count, press okay. And so what this is telling me is now it's counting the actual variables that was in it or in that label. Like for instance, I have two 24s in the data set. I have two 27s in the data set. That's what it's telling me. Mm -hmm. All right. 
So it already quickly found the frequencies of each one of these fours. The next step is once you click in one of these cells, some of you may see this on your thing. I didn't see it on my thing, so I had to click this data button. And when you go to data, oh, here it goes, under group, right here for group, you want to click on group. Do y'all see that on y'all's? Yes. Okay, click on group. And when you click on group, starting at, we want to start our data at the at what we started our last bin at. Our bin started at 10. That's where our first bin started at. So we're going to start this bin at 10. And we're going to end this bin. We ended it at 60, right? Yes. And we're going to count by 10s. If you press OK, it'll make the actual uh, thing for you. It'll make it for you like that. And it actually shows your row labels. It went from 10 to 19 instead of going from 10 to 20, because it actually is counting those values like that. So this just is a quicker way to get the table. And then once you have this table, you can literally just make the, you still have to find the other thing, but you can go to insert chart. Go to insert chart and you would go to pick a chart. And there goes your chart again. Just got to make it into a bar chart. I mean, make it into a histogram. So we would just close the gaps again. Like that. And there goes your bar. And there goes your histogram again. Y'all okay with that? Yes. All right. Cool. So um, the other thing then, going back to this, we're going to use these midpoints to create another graph. The midpoints and the percentages to create another graph. But in order to create this graph, we're going to make what's called an OJOB. And an OJOB is a cumulative percentage plot. It's a cumulative percentage plot. And so what that does is it's going to match each midpoint against the cumulative percentage for the class. So in order to do this, I need to have a cumulative percentage out here in a table. Now remember what cumulative percentage is. Remember what cumulative percent is? Is the you take each class and you add it to the one before it. Yes. So here we would have this. Next class equals this class right here. Plus. Plus that class. Next class equals this class right here. Plus that class. Next class equals this class right here plus this class. And the last class equals this class right here plus this class. And so now you're going to plot the midpoint against the cumulative percentage. So to do that, we're going to use a different graph. Here you're going to, if you go to uh, recommended plots, recommended charts, do you see the cumulative percent right here? Yes. That's the one I want. You're going to make actually a scatter plot. And really and truthfully, we should need to add something and I'll show you what we need to add in a second. But this is what you want to make. Something that looks like this. This is the OJA, and it's showing you the percent of each class. And it's look what it's plotting. It's plotting each midpoint for the class against the um, against its cumulative percent. And every OJA should end at one. And they should always OJA is going to do one of two things. They're going to um, always they're either going to increase from class to class, or you have one that can remain constant if nothing's in that class. But in general, every O job should increase from class to class. So I know like on some of your homework problems, they have an O job on top of a um, histogram. 
you can eliminate any problem like that where the old job is going down. The old job should always go up. It should always accumulate. Because you're, me you're measuring from class to class, all right? Mm -hmm. We really should start this at zero. So I should probably have another column, up, another uh, row up here for zero. zero, but I'm not going to worry about that right now. <clears throat> Are there any questions on any of this so far? Y'all okay with this? Mm -hmm. Yes, we need to do, we need to do anything else. Y'all want to do another example? What? What kind of chart is this? Like, can you spell that? Oh, you o said job. Ocean? Can you spell that? It looks like Oh Give. Oh Give. Okay, that's what I thought I saw. Okay, thank you. Yeah. It's called a cumulative percent plot, too, by the way. Like this title right here, cumulative percent plot. There's also no Give. The other chart that you can make from this, by the way, is going to be the um, frequent, the, the percent polygon from this. Does everybody know what a polygon is? Anybody give me a definition of, mathematical poly of a polygon, mathematically what it is? Anybody? It's one of those math terms. A shape with multiple sides? That's close. It is a shape, it has multiple sides. You're missing the most important part of a polygon though. It has to be a closed figure. Polygons are closed figure, closed shapes. So what, we, what, a, uh, what a percent polygon does is, you see this uh, histogram right here? It's basically a figure that'll, mo that'll close this part right here all the way around the x-axis. So you'll get the basic shape of the histogram without actually drawing the bars underneath it. And so let's see if I can make that. Uh, I need the midpoints for this. I'm gonna copy move it over here. I need the midpoints and I need, for this one I need the percentages. What happened? Oh, because I moved my name, I need to write them all out. Yeah. So here, what you need to do is this also. Um, let me drop this. You need to start at zero, zero, zero for it to close the figure. I need to make a new row right there, I think. There. I put zero here and zero there. Got that? You need to start at zero to close the figure. And at the end, you need to have also a zero to close the figure, to come back to the um, thing. So in between here, we have uh, 0 0.15, 0 0.3, 0 0.25, 0 0.2, 0 0.1. And here, the last midpoint would be at 65, so you can just put that there. So again, I'm adding these zero rows so it'll actually close the figure. Y'all got that? It'll, mm -hmm. it'll make it a polygon. So all we do is highlight this again. So. Go ahead, ask. The 65 zero, wouldn't that bring it? All the way back down. So wouldn't it be one? No, it'd be, you're not, because you're looking at percentage. So what it does is, so think about this percentage chart right here. Yeah. The first one's gonna put a, a dot right here. Or your first one's gonna start at zero, zero right here. Then you're gonna draw a line to a dot right here. Yeah. Then you're gonna draw a line to a dot right here in the next yeah. one. Okay. Then you're gonna come back down right here to this one. Yeah. Right okay. here, then right here, then right here. And at 65, zero, it'll be. Down at the bottom. Yeah, it'll close it. I was looking at it from the, your. Uh... From the cumulative, right? Yeah, yeah, and I was like, isn't that gonna look weird? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, I got you. That's what I figured what you said when you said it was one. So I heard that, yeah. So anyway, if you go to insert and you go to recommended charts again, this is the figure right here, by the way. Okay. That's what it does. You see how it makes, see how it basically makes the shape? Yeah. You see how it makes the shape of this right here? Mm -hmm. You see the peak up here? Mm -hmm. See that peak right there? It's the same thing as this peak right here. Then it starts to come down and it closes out right there.
And these are also good for comparison reasons because you're using, what are you using for these? Well, you're using this X, using this Y axis, which is what? Percentages, right? Those are percentages. Yeah, those are percentages. So do y'all feel comfortable with this stuff? I'm ready. Y'all want to do it one more? Y'all want to do the one for electricity costs? Yes. Yeah, one more, one more. All right, please. let's go ahead and knock out electricity costs, and then we'll call it a night. Sort. Go ahead and do this one. On this, I don't know if you can if you can leave the data like this, or you have to put the data down to a row. So you might have to, like, when I say that, I mean, you might have to do this. Like that. Move them all into a row. I mean, move them all into a column, not a row. So what short could I use them to do that? Or keyboard? I'm just doing control C. Control, I mean, control X, actually. Control X? Yeah, I'm just copying and pasting. Copy and pasting. Copy paste, that's all I'm doing. I'm cutting and pasting, actually. Command C. Mm -hmm. Well, mine is command. Y'all's will be control. Maybe I have a Windows. So we control X. Yeah, highlight what you want to do. Control uh, control X and then do control V, paste. Okay. Okay. You might be able to do it from an array like that. I've never done it like that before, though. And I don't want to sit here and tell y'all that you can and you can't. Yeah. And then look foolish. Although, I've done that plenty of times with y'all already. <laughs> I don't know why it's not doing it. <laughs> I did it five minutes ago, so I came to class. <laughs> there. <clears throat> a lot so you can do it either way you want to. You can go and sort this data if you want to. Because you have, it looks like we have how many values? Looks mm -hmm. like we have 50 values. Mm -hmm. So it's ending on 51, but I have a label in the first row, so that tells me it's 50 values, right? Yes. Let's do, um, I want to do this. I want to make it with five, and I want to make it with six. I want to make it with five, and I want to make it with six. Okay. All right. So I want to do it with both of them, just to see what the difference is if you make it with an extra one. So we'll do five first, and then I'll let y'all try to do six. So let's sort this data. Let's hit sort. Yeah, so we need to do here. Uh, just make a new one. Electricity called sorted. Yeah. Equals sort. This is how I sort. You can sort the other way with the actual thing at the top, though, too, if you want to. There. Here are mine sorted. Max value is 213. Min value is 82. Remember, I need the max and the min to find the range. So to find the range, I would do the max minus, minus the min. min. I get 131. I told y'all I want for my classes or my bins, I want five classes. So to get the width of the class? Got to divide it, 131 into five. Right, by five. 26.2. So what's the closest nice number to 26.2 that's bigger than that? 30. 30. <laughs> so the width of each class was going to be 30, all right? Okay. And so here's what we do. Um, classes or you want to call them bins, whatever you want to call them. Classes. The first class, so 82 means you're going to start it below 82 to capture it. So you need to start at about, you need to start at 80. 80. Yes. And go to 30 more, which is 110, right? 110. Yes. Then we go 110 to 140. 140. 140 to 170. 170. 170 to 200. 200 and then 200 mm -hmm. to 230 230 does that get is that bigger than our largest number i mean our, our yeah our largest number in the set 
Yes. Yes. So we're good there. So we'll capture the largest number. We know, so that means we captured the smallest, we captured the largest, so we're good there, right? Yes. So now we got to do is try to figure out how many go in each class, 80 to 110. We can count and sort. These values right here, so that's how many? Yep. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Mm -hmm. So our frequency was the first class. The seven. Next class, we go to 140, right? So we're going to go these values right here. 139. Yeah, so let's see. I'm use the count function because it'll just count the number of cells that I'm highlighting. Right there is 13 of them. So from 140 to uh, so from 140 to 170 is here. It's going to be 18. Good, thank you. And then from 170 to 200. These values right here, right? All right. So that's equal. How many is it? Nine. Nine. Thanks. Yeah. And that means that the last one is three. three. Let's verify. Put a total column and verify that. They should add to 50 if you sum them. Yeah. yeah. After 50. Mm -hmm. Now, the next thing we need is our midpoints. To get the midpoint, you do the lower bound, 80 plus the upper bound, 80 plus, you need to put parentheses too because quarter of operations, 80 plus 110, which mm -hmm. is 190, divided by two, 95. Yep. And then you can either do 110 plus 140, or you can just add 30 every time. So the next one would be 125. 155. 155. 85. And then 215. There you go. There go your midpoints. All right. Um, we're gonna do percentages? Yeah, we need to do our percentages next. So percentages, seven divided by 50. 50. Is it drag? Uh, I don't wanna do seven, I wanna do the other one. Equals 13 divided by 50. There. And again, I like to do a sum column for this one too, just to check to make sure I'm adding them correctly, add it correctly. It should add to one, and it does. And while we're at it, we can do our cumulatives too. Yes. Make all of our graphs cumulative percentage. Yeah, that goes too. And then once we have this, is just making the graph. Um, I'm going to make the percentage one because that's the one I, I think that we should work with the most is the percentage. So I highlight this cell, these cells, and the percentage cells like this. And um, this again, sorry. Uh, 
I'm sorry, I have a question. I'm listening. Okay, so right here it says range classes in width. Right. Maybe I don't know. I missed it when you talk about it. The the classes. How do you find that? Normally, that's given to you. Generally speaking, though, if you have like between twenty and fifty data points, you want to do about five classes. Okay. Technically, you can do however many you want to. Okay. Right. Got it. Got it. And so that's why I said I want to do it with five and do it with six to show you that it's not. It's just the way the graph looks. Generally speaking, when you handle data, though, it's between because if you show too many bars, you lose yeah. things. If you don't show enough bars, you don't see certain things. Mm -hmm. so the general rule of thumb, and when you do your histograms, um, even for your test, you probably won't have many. We probably won't have anything more than fifty data points to begin with, because the more you deal with, the uh, more time it takes. You, it's like I'm working with time. So just know, and on your homework, your homework gives you the actual classes already. It okay. tells you to find the values that go inside of it. All right. Thank All right. you. So uh, making this graph insert. I'll just use the recommended chart here. Is this? I want to format the data values. Mm -hmm. Closing the gap with. Change this to a solid field. Change this to a black. No, oh, no, I don't want to do that. No, no. <laughs> I messed that up. <laughs> I, clicked the, I clicked the bar colors. Line. I got you. I see what I'm doing. Solid line. It's because, like, when you're in Zoom, there's all these different screens for Zoom that are popping up all over my computer. Mm -hmm. And then y'all are asking me questions, too. I'm trying to answer y'all questions at the same time. Oh, man. There. I shouldn't have used white because white makes it like it's a gap. Right. Wait. <laughs> Elder bad color. Hello. <clears throat> Let me do like a red. Because white made it seem like it's a gap there. Or green or peach. There you go. <laughs> so that's the bar chart. I mean, that's the histogram for this data. And remember, histograms have no gaps. Another way you can actually label this, and notice this x-axis is labeling like this, right, by the way. Another mm -hmm. way I can label this x-axis is using the midpoints of the class. That's another uh, acceptable way to label it. But then we can make the um, ogive. And for the ogive. Hey, where do you go to fill in the gaps to? To make the gaps? To take them off to make sure they're, they're next to each other. Yeah, um, on mine, I go to, I click on the cell, I click on the bars themselves, right click, format data series. And you should have this one right here. Do you see that? No, I don't have that. What you got? This is a form, format, uh, Oh, there you, you click on the you click on the bars. Actually, click on a bar. If you click on the, oh, on the bar, area, click on the bar and do format data series. Okay, I see it now. You got it now. Yeah. All right. So after we have this, we can make the cumulative plot. Grab the midpoint and grab the cumulative percentage. percentages. And again, go to insert, mm -hmm. recommended charts. This is a scatter plot that you're graphing it with, the scatter plot. And then you get the cumulative percentage. And honestly, it should, it's kind of bugged me that it's not doing it. It should start at zero, zero, and then go over there. So let me fix this real quick. Here's what I mean. Percentages. So midpoint. I don't want to grab it, I want to copy it. I just need to put a zero in that column, a zero in the row first. And you, the more you do with Excel, the more you'll see there are certain things that you can like, uh, 
that probably aren't the best practice, but that make that make things come out to be what you want it to be anyway. So you just play with it until you get it to where you want it to go. And again, I'm telling you all that because I'm gonna give you projects, and I might give y'all one after tonight too, just to see if you know how to do this for real and make you turn it into me. We'll see. But anyway, once you have this, if you do it again, insert that chart. Mm -hmm. This is a scatter plot. And this is what this is what the Ojaj should look like. Starting at zero from the first when it goes up. Yes. There. That's what the Ojaj should look like. And they should always an Ojive or a percentage plot should always end at one. It should always end at one. And if you wanted to make the frequency, the uh, the percentage, the percentage polygon, you could do the same thing, except you would grab the midpoint and the cum. Uh, you would grab the midpoint and the percentage columns. So you grab this one. Or actually, I just need to grab this one. It's probably gonna mess up though. Yep. Just write them out. So again, you need the zeros to start off with. There, and you grab this column and this column and the chart that i keep using to make both these are the scatter plot graphs by the way it's the scatter plot ah 30 more 245 you need a zero for this one to close it by the way that's why i didn't close get rid of that chart do it again Insert, recommended chart, there. And here's your other graph. There are your three graphs. And you'll see all three on your homework if you haven't saw them yet, if you haven't did the homework yet. If you did the homework and you probably, we probably sat through nothing today, but I'm sorry, but if you didn't do it, this should help you. Do we have any questions? On the, when we're doing class, we're always going to choose five or use five for the class. It really just depends on what the data set says. Anytime you do it in, in this class, I'm going to give you the number I want you to do. Okay. So you don't have to worry about figuring out yourself. Okay. All right. Any other questions? Homework is this, this stuff from the Pearson, uh, Pearson, right? Yeah. That's the my math lab stuff. Okay. But I'm going to start, I think I'm, what I'm going to start doing you have big projects that are worth grades in this class. But I'm also thinking I'm gonna start doing some skill, re some skill checks. Like I might do a thing where I give you a data set and have you make me um, all three of these graphs again okay. on what we did tonight. I haven't decided yet. I have but, a question. Are you putting like the class for today in YouTube? Like the yes. video? Yeah, it'll be up. Okay. Any other questions? Everybody else okay? Yeah. All right. Well, thank y'all for joining me tonight. I will see y'all again on Tuesday. <laughs> okay. Y'all have a good night. <laughs>